For Pastor Archie Mitchell, spring 1945 brought waves of transformation. He and his wife, Elsie, were not only awaiting their firstborn, but he'd also taken up a fresh role as the head pastor at the Christian and Missionary Alliance Church in the tranquil lumber town of Bly, Oregon. Hoping to strengthen their nascent connections, the Mitchells organized an outing for five youngsters from their Sunday school session, all aged between 11 and 14, to have a picnic amidst the serene streams and tall ponderosa pines of neighboring Gihot Mountain on the picturesque morning of May 5, 1945. Navigating up a narrow gravel pathway, Mitchell stationed his car and started to unpack the picnic essentials and angling equipment. Meanwhile, Elsie, in her fifth month of pregnancy, along with the kids started wandering near a hillock leading to a stream close by. Suddenly, 13-year-old Joan Patsk noticed an unusual white fabric amidst the trees. Her inquisitiveness got the better of her, and she beckoned the others. See what's here, Elsie yelled towards her spouse by the vehicle. Seems like some balloon. From his position, the clergyman saw them huddled closely around the mysterious object, approximately 50 yards distant. As a child extended a hand towards the strange find, Mitchell started to voice a caution but never got to complete it. A massive detonation disrupted the serene mountainscape. The blast instantly claimed the lives of Elsie, her unborn child, and the five youngsters. A nearby forest ranger who rushed to the site discovered the victims spread out, resembling spokes around a smoldering pit, with the young 26-year-old pastor desperately trying to extinguish the flames on his wife's dress using his hands. What the dispatched U.S. military experts instantly recognized, but sought to keep concealed was that the peculiar device was an elevated balloon bomb, a weapon from Japan aimed at striking North America. Following the Doolittle Raid of 1942, wherein American planes targeted Tokyo and other Japanese metropolises, the Japanese defense forces desired to counteract. Yet, their manned aircraft couldn't make the distance to the U.S. west coast. Nonetheless, where they fell short in technical prowess, they compensated with geographical advantage. Historically, since the 13th century when twin cyclones thwarted Kublai Khan's Mongolian invasion fleet, it was a Japanese belief that divine winds, or kamikaze, were sent by deities for their protection. During the Second World War, this faith was rekindled as their experts identified a high-altitude airstream, presently termed the jet stream. This wind current, situated 30,000 feet above, had the capability to ferry hydrogen infused balloons to North American shores in merely three to four days. For a span of two years, the military crafted numerous balloons from thin yet sturdy paper derived from mulberry trees. This paper was pieced together by drafted schoolgirls, unaware of their ominous intent. Using lengthy 40-foot ropes, these balloons were equipped with incendiary mechanisms and 30-pound explosive bombs. The strategy was to release these over North America, igniting vast forest fires, inciting terror, and diverting war resources. From November 1944 to April 1945, in an operation named Fu Go, the Japanese defense dispatched over 9,000 of these unmanned aerial devices. While the majority plunged into the Pacific's depths, over 300 of these rudimentary white spheres completed the 5.000 mile journey. Sightings spanned from Holy Cross in Alaska, through Nogales, Arizona, reaching even as far east as Grand Rapids, Michigan. In a notable incident in March 1945, one such balloon made contact with a high power electrical line leading to a momentary power cut at the Hanford plant in Washington. This facility was engaged in producing the plutonium that would later contribute to the atomic bomb deployed on Nagasaki. Until the tragic encounter on Gihot Mountain involving Mitchell's congregation, none of these balloons had resulted in any physical harm. Invoking the rationale of curbing panic and withholding vital geographical feedback that might refine enemy accuracy. The U.S. defense establishment placed a lid on any news surrounding the Japanese balloon offensives. Even as many locals in Bly were privy to the actual events, they acquiesced to military mandates, maintaining discretion over the incident. 
Consequently, the media depicted the victims as perishing from a blast of uncertain cause. Nevertheless, by May 1945's conclusion, prioritizing public welfare, the military opted to unveil the genuine backstory of the blast and cautioned Americans to stay wary of any unfamiliar white balloons. They might spot, crucial insights sadly relayed a month too late for the Oregon casualties. In retrospect, Fu Go was a military misstep. A scant number of balloons hit their intended marks, and the jet stream gusts were potent only during the winter. During this period, North America's moist and snow-laden forests deterred the breakout of expansive blazes. The only tragedies they catalyzed were the demise of five guileless children and an expectant mother, marking the sole casualties in the mainland U.S. from adversarial operations during World War II. Yet, these balloon offenses hinted at impending warfare methodologies. In his book, Fu Go, The Curious History of Japan's Balloon Bomb Attack on America, Ross Cohen labeled the device as humanity's inaugural intercontinental ballistic missile. This noiseless infliction of harm via unmanned balloons is often likened to WWII's precursor to drone combat.